torso. Put others close to a good, yeah. to a good bio from Allah. Um, oh, um, Emily Tosso brought others please to evict Bayero from Palace. A Kano State High Court has ordered the Commissioner of Police to immediately evict the 15th Emir of Kano. Minu Ado Bayero and take over the place of Emir of Khan. The court also stopped Bayero and four authors from parading themselves as Emirs. The four authors include Nasir Ado Bayero, former Emir of Bichi, Dr. Ibrahim Abubakar II, former Emir of Karaye, Kabiru Mohamed Inua, former Emir of, Na of Rano, and Aliyu Ibrahim Gaya, former Emir of Gaya. The court order followed an ex parte motion filed by the counsel to the applicant, Ibrahim Issa Wangida Esquire, before the court presided over by Justice Amina Adamu Aliyu. Similarly, the Kano state government has warned that nobody will intimidate it for taking a decision that serves the common good of the people by reinstating the deposed Emir of Kano, Alaji Muhammadu Sanusi II. It also said the intervention of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in the ongoing tussle over the throne of the Emir would save the state from descending into chaos. Kano State Deputy Governor Aminu Guazo said this at a press conference at the government house on Monday in Kano. The Deputy Governor urged the President to take necessary steps to prevent the situation of the throne of the Emir of Kano from escalating. Joining us is the Professor of Political Science at Bayero University, Kano, Sani Kamil Ufage. Also joining us from Kano is the Executive Director, Center for Awareness of Justice and Accountability, Kaja, Kabiru Saidu Dakata, and a development worker who is based in Kano, Salisu Yusuf. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Hello, thank you for having me. Okay, it's a pleasure having you. Should I start with Salisu? Salisu, okay. are you there? Yes, I'm there, sir. What would be your opening salvo in the unfortunate uh, situation developing in Kano? So now the situation is very delicate because we have just read a story of court order that they should convict Muhammad Sunusi from Palace. I just went uh, around the AMS Palace just to be seeing how the situation is going, yeah. which I saw the house kept to former Emir, Alaji Amin Adobairo, was surrounded by policemen, military, and civil defense. While the palace of uh, Emir Sunusi, uh, the former CBN governor, was surrounded with the guards, the traditional guards. So by this, or by looking at this, we know where government is now looking for because um the system of traditional rulers as i said it is the process for the king makers to you know choose a king but this time around the process is no is didn't follow the due process we have just received an information that the four emirs were dissolved and now muhammad sunusi was reinstated into the uh, as a new area of Kano State. So the situation is very delicate because now are we to follow the court order or are we follow the state government in terms of uh, engaging who is be the area of Kano State? Thank Malam you. Pange. Malam Pange, how would you want to start? Hello? Is Malam Fage there? 
Professor Kamil Fagi. Mention oh. his name very well. Oh, Professor. Hello. Professor, sorry about that. Uh, I guess my, my producer missed it all. Professor, are you there? Yeah, I am here. Fantastic. Uh, professor, uh, how would yes. you want to start? I've got one or two questions based on the uh, uh, prologue of the other gentleman, Salisu, but I would rather want to listen first to your uh, prologue before I start asking questions. Your floor, sir. Hello. Yeah. So go ahead. No, I said, how would you want to start? What would be your opening remarks, sir? Now, my opening remarks is that um, uh, this thing is uh, getting out of hand as a result of personality politics, personality conflict between the two former governors. And uh, that is why, you know, they keep on changing, playing uh, the Emirate as if it is a football match. This one will kick it this way, the other will kick it the other way. So I think uh, what we are seeing is a product of that, and which is uh, dangerous for uh, the system and also for the peace and stability in Kano. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, and uh, the last guest, sorry, it, you know, the last but not the least, are you there? Yeah, I am. Oh, fantastic. Your opening, no, remark, actually... your opening remark. Okay. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much for having me. Uh, this is a very sad situation because the tussle is embarrassing the traditional institution itself. It's embarrassing Kano as a state. And also, it's ridiculing the entire northern part of the country because Kano is a very influential state uh, in the northern part of the country. But we should not shy away from saying the facts as they are. When this thing started in 2019, people like us who have um, uh, anticipated that if care is not taken, the current situation would be the result. We advised the then governor, Abdullahi Umar Ganduji, to do the needful. Unfortunately, Abdullahi Umar Ganduji, the then governor of the state, did not listen to any stakeholder. He did not even listen to the elders of the state. Instead of giving them the opportunity to talk to him and find the way out about the situation at the moment, is he was calling their names, abusing them. You understand? And anybody that is in Kano knew even before the 2023 election that if NNPP or Concosia movement win the election, definitely they will do away with Aminu and the other four emirs, and they will bring back Sunusi. These are some of the facts that we should always tell ourselves. And when they came, the, the state assembly uh, amended the law and at the end scrapped the, four, the five emirates and the governor signed the amended uh, bill which brought back the emir Muhammad Yusunusi II. And somebody called Aminu Baba, not even the Aminu Ado Bayero now, took the matter to court. And we should not forget the history. This Aminu Baba who took the matter to court has for long been disowned by the traditional institution. He was sacked long ago by the late Emir of Kano, Ado Bayero. For insubordination, he took his case to court. And Supreme Court affirmed his dismissal by the traditional institution. Now, it is the same person that is now coming to jeopardize the peace of the state. So my own take is it is a 
process because we have a system, a democratic system, which has separation of powers. The legislature has done its part. The executive signed the bill. And I don't expect the judiciary to come because somebody, one person claimed that his right has been violated because of that one person. The rights of so many people in the state can be affected because what is happening currently in the state is affecting even the businesses of the individuals. It is affecting everybody like me now. I have an activity that I supposed to conduct today where I invited partners from different parts of the country. Somebody from Lagos sent me a text that because of the situation in Kano, I will not attend your program. And the fact is, nothing is happening in Kano. Just some people are giving a bad impression to the people that are not in Kano that things are happening. So I think it's a very bad uh, situation. It's, it's, it's a sad situation for us in Kano because of some selfish interests of some people they are recognizing the people of the state because of I'll their come, self. I'll come back to you. Let, let me go to Salisu now. Uh, Salisu, uh, it is becoming obvious and very desirable from the remarks, the opening remarks of the of the three of you. Salisu, are you there? Yes. It is becoming obvious that we are having a very, uh, a very sordid partisan situation. Mm. That the two former governors mm. are the principal character in this uh, in this desecrating tradition, desecrating uh, contention. Mm. And that, like the last speaker said, that it was almost um, uh, envisageable that it could be it could have been envisaged that given the circumstances through which uh, Muhammad Sanusi the second was uh, was defenestrated or dethroned as the 14th emir. It was designable that if the opposition party then came into power, this would happen. Uh, what would be your response to that? You see, um, traditional institution is not a democratic institution. So if they have their own tussles as two former governors, or maybe the opposition between the two governors, that would not touch the traditional institution. Because looking at the history, we all know from where we have started, from the traditional institution to the system where we are seeing it now, which is not reliable. I'm saying this because if you allow this thing to happen, maybe if another party or if another governor came into power, he would do the same. And we know how the system of traditional institutions are. Very respectable, very historian, very high-level people that have experience, that have knowledge and everything. But now because of politics, I'm saying this, if you go to our State House of Assembly, those that call this law, most of them, they are not educated. I'm very sorry to say this. So how on earth, maybe because of the interest of the few people that can now bring about 20 million populace of Kano states into trouble? Because in reality, they are creating trouble unnecessary. If they have their own tussle, let's go as politician to do their own tussle, but not bring it, it into Sorry the to. traditional institution. Yes. Sorry, so. Before I go to Prof, I want you to be to be uh, thinking about this. Kano okay. has a Kano has an untoward and disturbing history mm. of politics. Mm. Always politics always in inflicting a form of reputational avoir on mm. the MSC. Mm. You may not know that indeed 
the the grandfather of Dan Gote, the father of Dan Tata, had his house with the houses of the whole district of Kano burnt down because of the situation in the contention for the emirship of Kano there. You hmm. also remember that Saddam Osa Ahmad Benu, the, as the premier of northern Nigeria, hmm. he told the father of, of Sanusi, that's Sanusi the first. So the I'm grandfather, the grandfather, now, the grandfather. Uh, the grandfather of Sanusi, and I'm listening to you now. I'm thinking, are you not over romanticizing the past? Is it not on almost uh is it not almost uh something that the emirship the 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 lofty position sometimes contends with that the political class from mm. the colonial time to mm. the first republic sometimes mm. inflicts this reputational damage on it but let me go to professor i'll come back i'll come back to you later uh, okay. Prof, uh, we, many watching us may not know that the emirship of Kano has, as 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 lofty as it is, as elegant as it is, as very iconic of northern tradition, especially the Hausa Fulani tradition, as it is, we have had historical circumstances where some untoward situations like this have happened in the past. How would you want to respond to the fact that many are now perturbed, thinking this is the first time this kind of situation is happening? Professor? Is Prof there? Yeah, I am. How, how would you want to respond to uh the the pose that i've just uh i've just uh, made um it just, just repeat it because i've been having challenges with my oh, uh, the network here yeah. so repeat i said we have historical facts to the fact that the emirship of kano has revived as it is as hallowed as the position is, sometimes comes, especially from the time of the colonial authorities, sometimes comes with controversies when it comes to his occupancy. We had the major incident of the late 19th century where districts were burnt in Kano because of the contention. I also gave the example of the First Republic when uh, the distinguished and honorable uh, premier of the North, Sir Amadou Abelo, uh, dethroned the grandfather of Sanusi. Uh, so what is happening now may be disturbing to many, but it's not totally strange to the history of that lofty office. I would you want to respond to that. Yeah, it's true that um, the, uh, throughout the history we have been having this kind of things, but the cause, uh, the reason for it are uh, deeper. Um, you know, colonialism, we, uh, you know, rendered uh, the uh, emirate ship as uh, just a tool in their own hands. And uh, in the past republic, Yes, there was that conflict, but it was personality conflict between the Emma then and the Sardona, okay, on the issue. You know, the Emma was the chairman or the president of NPC Northern Region, and the, the Sardona was the national, and so there was this uh, personality. But what makes this one totally different, except for the fact that there is uh, this back and forth, is the conflict between, uh, you know, uh, political giants who are not, uh, you know, who have nothing to do with uh, the, the MRS system, but uh, their conflict has now vibrated into the MRS system. So whatever we see, 
uh, the end result is that of uh, tussle and, uh, you know, conflict. But the reason, like I said, deeper, and what I see now is that so long as the two major contestants, I mean, the two major parties in the system will continue to experience this as... Thank you very much, Prof. Tan? Uh, okay. Hello, Prof. I, 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 we're having a bit of a technical issue with your with your connection, but you've stated it earlier. What? Yes. So, like, to be returned. And now, if another government comes, that is a repetition of this issue. So the best thing is system uh, and put it back to its own reward position and keep it out of solution to the problem. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, I want also a, a friend from Kaja. I want you to look into the fact that this is an issue that is that is one hundred percent residual in the institutions of the state, and I mean the institutions of Kano State, mm. the legislature, the Kano House of Assembly, yeah. has made has amended the law. The governor has assented to the law as we yeah. speak now. It is a prima facie law. We know from some of the pronouncements of the Supreme Court that the intervention of the, of the Federal High Court is untoward and inconsistent with precedent. Mm -hmm. This is exclusive, exclusively a state law situation. And that as we speak, a Kano High Court has ruled in favor of the affirmation of the law. So we are in a situation now that the only four that has been made was to have allowed Bayero to return to Kano. I guess historically, this is one of the reasons why, even from colonial times, if a king was dethroned, was never allowed to stay in his uh, in his uh, kingdom anymore because it could lead to the kind of contention that has been seen on the streets of Kano now. How would you respond to those two points? One, that this seems to be an issue residual in the institutions of Kano, and that Bayero ought not to have been allowed to come back to Kano after the official announcement of his defenestration. I would want to re respond to that, sir. I think, Mr. Oba, you finished everything. I think um, with the foundation you led, you even educated the viewers. This is something to do with um, uh, Kano State. So as lawyers said, it has nothing to do with the federal high court. Unfortunately for us, because the politicians who are who satisfying their interests can go to any length are now heading to uh, ridicule our judiciary. They can go to a court that does not have a jurisdiction to entertain a case and obtain an order from that court. So, like you said, chieftaincy matters are matters that are residual in our uh, democratic system. Because uh, thank God we have prop, there are uh, power uh, distribution between uh, federal, states, and even sometimes local governments, the exclusive list, the concurrent list, and the residual list. The exclusive lists are power.
federal government. The uh, uh, powers where state and uh, federal can exercise Ministry of Education, you have State Ministry of Education, you have Federal Ministry of Health, you have State Ministry of Health. These are areas where both federal and state can exercise. But you have areas where only state, that is the residual list, and that is where chieftaincy, where traditional institutions fall within. And unfortunately, our political uh, actors who know this can go to where they know they don't have jurisdiction. So my point here is, I want to make an appeal to the judiciary. They should not allow themselves to be used by the politicians. We have had this embarrassment in Kano State during the election petition uh, case between Governor Abakabir Yusuf and APC, where the politicians misled the judiciary to have a conflicting judgment. The oral judgment that was delivered in the court was different from the CTC that was brought out from the court. So I want to use this opportunity to call on the judiciary. This matter is purely a state matter. The state assembly did their own assignment, did their own uh, amendment about the bill, about the law, and the governor assented to it. And like I said, the three of us are all from Kano State. We all know before this election, if NNPP formed the government, if Concosia formed the government, Amino and other four emirs will be dismissed. We know this, and we know Mohammed Sunusi II will be brought back. And even Aminu Ado Bayero himself is aware of this. And why is it five of them were affected by the amendment? But only Aminu, only Aminu, and even Aminu, he handed over all the traditional, uh, traditional uh, items to the uh, Emir Muhammad Sunusi II. And he had no intention of coming back to the state. It was an influence of some people who are from state and who are not happy with the current peace in the state, who are now in Abuja, that are influencing him and ask him to come back. One of them, like I said, is okay. Okay. somebody me, that has let, been disowned by the let, traditional institution uh, itself. Uh, uh, I, I have to be. I have to interject there because we don't necessarily have proof. Uh, for uh, that is your belief. I respect it, but I must also let my viewers know that we don't have uh, uh, tangible proofs for your suspicions or your your belief. Uh, Salisu, Salisu, you seem to me amongst the three. Uh, the three of you guesting on this show, you seem to me to be the one that is a bit more disturbed. Uh, not so much because you have not envisaged it, but because you think that it tarnishes the, it tarnishes the reputation, the image, and the brand of that lofty office. But, Salisu, would you, given the very, given the very um, dirty politics between the two personalities, the two principals in this case, would you not, uh, you know, uh, why are you this disturbed? Why haven't you envisaged it as the others, your colleagues here, seem to be taking it in their strikes? You want to respond to that, Salisu? Is Sally still there? Okay, in the absence of Sally Sue, uh, uh, Prof. Yes. Would, would you want to help us uh, put some illumination into the fact that any anybody who follows politics, uh, who lives or follows Kano's uh, uh, politics, 
would ordinarily have envisaged uh, the fact that this may happen. Indeed, uh, I would suppose the, the five emirs from the movement, the, the Conquencia movement, gained the legitimacy of power ought to have known that this was, was, was going to happen. Am yeah, I you mean? see... Yeah. Um, yeah. You see, one problem that uh, we have to bear in mind is that democracy uh, is governed, and one of the main important as, uh, aspects of democracy is rule of law. Okay? Just because somebody has won an election, it is not a license for any person uh, to exercise power anyhow he likes. Everybody knew very well that yeah, things are going to change with uh, the new government, especially on their position uh, on uh, the issue of Emirates. But the part is that even though people would want to say that the legislature has done its uh, way, uh, I mean, right uh, function, and that the executive also has assented the thing, but democracy is not, uh, like I say, a, a lawless system. Uh, the judiciary is the one that will interpret whether you have done it uh, according to the Constitution or not. Look at the substance of what uh, uh, the uh, person uh, took the case to the federal court. Okay? One, uh, even if you say it is a, a purely state affair, he was able to maneuver and uh, bring in the inspector general and the police commissioner and others, which makes it uh, binding and legal for him to take that case. And the other dimension is that uh, they are not talking of the right of a person. Okay? You must have a reason uh, to say that uh, you just um, uh, dismiss or disrupt this person and now bring another person. Uh, you, you have to follow the procedure. So this is what we are saying. People Pro should professor, be mindful of Yes. My, my distinguished professor, uh, you used phrases like the rule of law. You used phrases like follow the procedure. And I'm sitting here as somebody who is not fit to intellectually contend with the way you've used them. But I'm sitting here thinking about the... The properly constituted Kano legislature, that is the Kano House of Assembly, passed the law. The governor who has the right of assent under a constitutional, under a constitutional order assented to the law. The, the bill ultimately became a law. The law, as it is, is being implemented. So in what way, shape, or form has it contradicted or conflicted with what you believe to be the rule of law, sir? No, don't, don't, don't try to make me like I'm taking a side on the issue. What I'm saying is the fact that already this case has been taken to the, the court. And ideally, even this talk is not supposed to take place because it is not before a court. So we have to wait and see what it is. Otherwise, it will be a uh, subjudicial that we are talking of something before the court. But what you are saying, what I'm saying personally is that since now the issue is before the court, let all the parties wait until the issue has been resolved. Whether the court has jurisdiction to hear it or not, it is not a panel of you and I or the listeners that will do. It is the judiciary that will now resolve that uh, issue. So as far as I'm concerned, these are issues that we have to be mindful of, okay? Whether or not the assembly has done it. I'm not saying they, they did it wrongly. I'm not saying the governor did it wrongly for signing it. But since there is that something now that has come, and I think that is the rightful thing is for us to allow the process to go. Now, by going into the state uh, judiciary, which is also uh, you know, a high court, I am not a lawyer, but from elementary thing you know, a judge cannot vacate somebody's uh, law of equal jurisdiction. 
This is simple. This is a federal high court. This is a state high court. So somebody, another judge cannot vacate unless the court where the issue is, uh, you know, uh, taken to is the one that do it or a higher court. That is what I'm saying. These are basic elements in, in Judea. Uh, Prof, uh, in yes. the instance that we, you are alluding to, the Kano I Court has not vacated the, uh, the injunction given in ex parte. I understand. I, I can't hear you. I understand. But what I'm saying, maybe I use it. Wait. Maybe I use the wrong word. But what I'm saying. What the Kano High Court has done is to give injunction in ex parte to a group of applicants, including the Attorney General of Kano State, the Speaker of House of Assembly of Kano State, the House of Assembly, and some other things that Ado Bayero, uh, that Bayero should no longer, Bayero and the four others should no longer parade themselves as emirs, and that Bayero should be arrested by the police and taken out of Kano. So I quite understand your position. You have given a word of wisdom that I know we must also eat. And that word of wisdom is that as we speak, this matter is at court. And when matters are at court, we can only speak in a manner that will only state the facts as they are, not argue for position. So I respect that, sir. Uh, let me bring in Isani Subak. Isani Subak. Okay. Uh, we go to the gentleman from Kaja. Okay. Hello, my friend. Yeah, I'm with you. Now, it is obvious that even you, even you, you are a bit disturbed the way this thing is unfolding, the way this unfortunate drama is unfolding. What do you think ought to be done now to forestall the perception of chaos. You, you are in Kano, Prof is in Kano, Sanisu is in Kano. I'm talking to you people now, and I can see, I can discern that there is no problem in Kano. But like you rightly stated, some of the people who ought to be, to, to be uh, attending an event that you have organized, they are a bit a bit reticent to come to Kano because of the perception of uh, lively violence that may happen in, in Kano. What would you want to suggest or advise I, I, all I the parties from the police to the government to the eminent gentleman, the former emir of Kano, to even the uh, newly stated uh, Emir of Kano, what would be your advice across the board? I, I think the the advice is for uh, everybody. Uh, we should be careful the way we want to exercise our overriding public interests. right has been violated you cannot call rights of other uh, citizens somebody felt that he was not the state assembly the state assembly of the state and something I need to remind you, the anchor of this program, that in the suit filed by Amin Dubaba, he's not even a party to that matter. And 
some elements need to be highlighted. Number one, the order after being issued by the Federal High Court, the parties to the matter were not stopped before they take the action. It was after the action has been taken. That is after the law has been assented to by the executive governor of the state, after the Emir Muhammad Sunusi II is in the traditional, uh, in, the, in the palace, that they were served. So what I'm saying here is, it is, since the laws have been abused, assuming now, assuming now, to be recognized as the Emir. Can you work with an employer that does not need your service? I mean, Adobairo is not elected, mind you. Yes, there's a process of selecting a, 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 a king or an Emir in Kano State. But the governor is the you know, employer because he's the one that accepts or rejects that selection by the by the king makers. So will it be comfortable for Aminu Adobairu to be as the emir of Kano when the governor, the majority of the state assembly, do not want to work with you? So my advice here is for everybody, the governor, the state assembly, the traditional uh, rulers, and the major stakeholders especially the elders in the state, and also the federal government, because the federal government has a stake in this issue because of the peace and security of the people of Kano State. Let them use morality now to address this problem. Because if you're talking of democracy, the people that were elected by the people, you know, pass a law. The governor that won his election assented to the law. So somebody, just one person, who, like I said, has at a time been sacked by the same traditional institution in Kano State, by the Emir, the, the late Emir Adobayaro may so rest in peace. The man has been sacked, and he took his case to court. He went up to the level of Supreme Court. The Supreme Court affirmed that, and he was brought back to similar position by uh, Aminu Adobairu. And this amendment of the law done by the state assembly affected that his position. Only him took the case to, to, to court. How can he come and uh, apply but, for this? But, but will agree with me. Of will, an entire law. But, but will agree and with and me, you will court. agree with me that if a man reasonably believes that his fundamental human right I, 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 I've been vitiated. The best thing to do would be to go to court. Let us understand what this right we are saying. Where your own right stops, that is where my own right begins. Okay. Let's, yes, okay. we should appreciate this. I, 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 okay, so, let's, uh, not... let's, give, let's give Prof the honor of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, giving the epilogue to the show. Prof, how would you, what would be your advice to all the parties involved in this matter with a view to maintaining the peace of Kano? Because if anything unfortunate happens in Kano, it will not only be limited to Kano. Kano is a very cosmopolitan, very metropolitan uh, uh, conurbation. Any unfortunate thing will literally affect all of Nigeria. The prof, your, your wrap up, sir. Is prof there? You, you, need, to oh. you need to unmute him. You need to unmute Okay. Uh, uh, okay, maybe. Hello, maybe. can you hear me now? Okay, sir. Okay, we can hear you now. I said, yeah, what I'm saying is. Uh, wisdom to close. 
Yes, uh, given the importance of peace and stability, uh, not only in Kano, but uh, as you rightly state, if Kano is uh, on fire, it will vibrate uh, virtually in every aspect, uh, part of Nigeria. And uh, the leaders and the stakeholders should know that if there is no peace, they cannot be able to rule. So nothing will take place where there is instability, where there is crisis. So my call to them is that since the process is now before the court, everybody should abide by the law, okay? Every side should abide by the law. Let the court finally decide who constitutionally is going to be the, uh, the EMA or not. And once it is decided, whoever doesn't agree, he has the channel to go and appeal until he exhausts all the, uh, you know, the levels of uh, 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 law. But to me, I think the way things are going, uh, bringing this, everybody, you know, getting uh, support. This one has uh, his own supporters. The other one, it is a dangerous trend. Because by the time, uh, you know, they take the law into their own hands. Nobody knows where it is going to end. So that is my call. Let's go by the rule. Let's go by what the court said, and then finally decide who will be the aim. Thank you very much, Prof. This is where we wrap it up for today. Uh, we really want to appreciate our viewers. We hope you've been well informed by this uh, distinguished gentleman on, on the show today. My name is still Bola Oba. Have a good evening. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, uh, Thank you. my culture friend. Uh, we, will, we hope we'll be calling on you for better information and not uh, something as disturbing as this. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Thank you, sir.